we are uh, here in the Bahamas. We're we are going to make it right. If you became a millionaire, would you keep working? You know? Great job, brother. Good fun to make sure you're right. What's going on right now is California's trying to figure out. Don't be. Don't be that popping butt. Yeah. Oh, I can. Welcome to BitBoy Crypto, the people channel, home of the Bit Squad, the largest and greatest crypto community in all the interwebs. No channel works harder to keep you in the know about crypto, including these beautiful ISO 20022 coins. Go check it out, hitmerch.com. Um, a lot of people really like, we sold a ton of these yesterday. People love these guys. HBAR, XRP, Algorand, XTC, uh, Quant, QNT is on here. Um, and uh, what, which one am I missing? Is Stellar on here? Is that on yep, your... Yep, yep. Yeah. XLM's here. IOTA. Yeah, so there you go. Those are all the coins that make it up. Now, it's not an official list of ISO 20022 coins, but pretty decent guess uh, based on some standards. Uh, but anyways, banks are losing their minds right now. The number one thing we like to see in crypto is banks go insolvent, right? Uh, because they're already insolvent. Hopefully people don't lose a bunch of money. Uh, they probably will. But the fact is... I believe today we're going to finally start seeing what, I, what I'm going to call the beginning of the great financial awakening. This is where people in this country understand what's happening in our economy, the reality of the situation. No longer blame FTX for uh, you know their insolvency and paint them to be villains while you have every bank in the country doing the same thing, using customer deposits, giving low interest, not giving the profit shares, it, all of the same things, except the banks are able to get away with it. Now, I'm not saying FTX was right in what they did. Certainly not. Definitely Sam's going to go to prison, in my opinion. He deserves it. However, that's the way the normal system operates. So uh, Cody Schofield says, Ben, not trying to throw shade. That's always a precursor to shade. But how do you think we are going to go up from uh, with all the bearish uh, signals on the charts? Love everything you do. Uh Guys, I'm not really that. The reason why I'm not worried about the chart is because we told you for six weeks this was probably going to happen. Didn't we? Mm -hmm. Now, I thought it would probably get closer to 28 to 30 before having this pullback. But 25.2 was a very hard level of uh, resistance. And it couldn't get over it. And it got rejected several times. And now we are returning to fill the gap. We just filled the semen gap yesterday when this began. Certainly, we could go into the 18s. Uh, but we predicted that's what we would see. So now that we're seeing the price drop to the level we thought we would see it go to, then why would we be bearish? Why would we be bearish? I trust the four-year fundamentals of the Bitcoin cycle more than anything else out there. Not that worried about the macro. Um, you know, if we do have a gigantic collapse of banks across the United States, that will definitely probably have a wick. Who knows? We could wick to a new you know, kind of like we did with the pandemic crash, something like that, just wick down and, and come back up to a decent level. Uh, but overall, the market's not doing anything shocking right now. And it feels like we're just in a FUD cycle and every story is negative about crypto for the last few weeks. Whereas before that, things seem to be good every week. Uh, so it's just the way the news cycle shifts based on the, the price direction um, and, and things like that. Uh, but um, I would also say uh, that, it's very uh, low IQ. I saw the guy in the chat who said that uh, I said Bitcoin would never go below 20K again. What? I didn't say that. Uh, what I said was, if we were to move the rally forward and we were to go above maybe 30, then we could potentially look and maybe not going below 20 again. But we can't even go over 25.2. So that certainly was not what I said. Um, and I've been telling you guys for at least six weeks, wh when were we in Texas? I guess that was for the book tour. A couple weeks ago. No, that was, that was like the end of, eh, probably about three and a half, three weeks ago, I guess it was. Um, I know that day we were talking about doing the, a See Me Gap video, and I was talking to AJ and Drew about it, and, uh, uh, and Aaron. And at least since then, we've been telling you that we're probably going to have uh, this drop to fill the See Me Gap. I still believe CME gaps are very strong. I, I don't, they are not as strong as they used to be, but when you're relatively close to one, it acts as a magnet and it pulls you down. So um, overall, not worried about the market. It's very low IQ in my opinion uh, to believe that uh, now we're going back to new lows today. Like 
don't change your sentiment that quickly. If you have something that totally goes against and disqualifies what you believe about something, then yeah, take a new information and change your opinion. But I ain't worried. I ain't scared at all. Um, I think that uh, this is something that we needed. And I think going forward uh, next week, unless we get a major collapse of major banks, uh, I think we'll slowly but surely start to see things go the right direction. And you were talking with me today, TJ, about uh, uh, they've already said that rate cuts are on the table for December. Yep, on the table for mm -hmm. December already. So not obviously that means they're going to have to hold some rates for a little while, which means we could start to see the end of raising. Uh, but if they start cutting, that's, that's just going to be wild. Yeah. Well, and, you know, potentially print more money, you yeah. know. They, uh, whenever the government wants to do something with money, they got to print it because we just don't have it. Uh, yeah, so let's talk about what's going on with uh, the bank right now. Um, we have U.S. bank woes. Silicon Valley bank stocks plunge one day after Silvergate downfall. Uh, fears have been heightened over the future of another U.S. bank this week after Silicon Valley Bank, or SVB, the 13th largest bank in America, from what I've told, announced a significant sale of assets and stock aimed at raising additional capital. Uh, the release of the financials, however, plunged SVP's stock price by 60% on March 9th. Um, a further 23% decline afterwards. Uh, let's see. Who's Becker? 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 SVB chief, Greg Becker. Uh, he reaffirmed the bank was well capitalized with one of the lowest loan to deposit ratios of any bank our size. Expects to reinvest the capital from the sale into more asset sensitive short term securities. So um, let's see. I believe the biggest risk to startups and VCs would be a, a mass panic, a bank run. I mean, certainly that's what we could be seeing the beginning of right now. Um, maybe not. You had Peter Thiel uh, come out and tell like all of his clients. Yeah. Have fund. Yeah. Companies he's invested yeah. in basically. Yeah. Uh, get your own money out. <laughs> That, yeah, of course the bank doesn't want to see a bank run. No, no, your deposits, don't don't withdraw all your deposits, please. That's not what we want to see. Yeah. So there's big news going on today, guys. Um, is SVB too... Is SVB too big to fail? <laughs> They're missing an O right there. I do that sometimes too on accident. Will it get rescued? Bill Ackman already calling for bailouts. Who, what is, was Bill Ackman from? I mean, he's a big hedge fund guy. Uh, yeah, I, but he's very, he's actually, there's one specific no, thing that he Theranos. was involved with. He was really involved with, with Theranos. He was one of the biggest backers. Because uh, uh, I, I learned about it when I was, like a lot of people were trying to short it and he was just, no, it's great. It's the greatest thing ever. Greatest thing ever. Um, yeah. He, yeah. He says a lot, I, he says a lot of crazy stuff with his tweets. I'll say he that. does. I, I think there's something else though also. Let me, let me type in his name real quick. Bill Ackman. Uh... Let's see. Also, guys, while he's looking that up, if you haven't smashed the likes yet, uh, smash the likes if you like to see banks fail. You know, taste of their own medicine. Absolutely, man. Nothing like seeing a bank fail to make you feel good in the morning. Uh, let's see here. Pershing, net worth was $3.4 billion. Went to Harvard, Gotham Partners, Pershing Square. Herbalife. He was in Herbalife. Um, position in Netflix. Yeah, that's where, yeah, what, which Netflix, oh, he had a position in Netflix. Yeah. No, he got, it, where, it was the Netflix thing, I think, on Theranos when I was saw, like, he had people calling him up, like, dude, you're going to get wrecked. Get your money out of this. And he yeah. was like, no, nope, it's good. Doubling down. Um, He's a signatory of the Giving Pledge. That's, like, Bill Gates' thing. So, yeah, I could have sworn there was one other one um, that I do not see here that was very, very relevant. Uh, but anyways, okay, so I digress. Uh, let's see. This is the timeline. This, you can you guys can read this if you really want to. Um, but basically, the long and the short of it is these banks are really tied to a lot of these treasury bonds. There's a lot of really fascinating stuff, um, you know, going on uh, with stablecoin staking and why they're trying to remove that, how it relates to the bonds, um, and things like that. Uh, yeah, he did tweet support for SBF after stuff hit the fan. Correct. Mm -hmm. That's that's what I remember him for for sure, um, and, and, and things like that. So. Um, all right. Silicon or Silvergate and Silicon Valley Bank distress sparks. Uh, may, let me read that again. Silvergate and Silicon Valley Bank distress sparks major fears for U.S. economic outlook uh, in a gloomy economy, which is still reeling from prolonged lockdowns and a year-long war in Ukraine. How about 
from the flaws of our financial system that includes these banks. How about yeah. we give the blame where it's due here instead of blaming Ukraine? Um, let's see. Investment manager Lynn Alden. Uh, she's not an influencer. Remember that. She, she's not an influencer because she said so. Commented that only a tiny fraction of the total $17.6 trillion in U.S. bank deposits is actually backed up by physical cash. Well, I'm glad they got that from her. We tell you that on the show almost every day. Uh, Goldberg, Peter Schiff chimed in, commenting that the U.S. may be on the verge of another financial crisis. Um, buy gold. That's what I'm sure he says. Big wow. four banks net unrealized loss. Look at that. That's insane. Yeah. That is, uh, it, let's see, Bank of America, J.P. Morgan, City, and Wells Fargo. Banks are getting wrecked right now. Also, uh, just look at, read this from Jason the Creative. Wells Fargo had a system glitch this morning and customer funds are missing. I'm missing a few thousand. Yeah, I, I just looked it up and confirmed. They're like, oh, sorry. Sorry for the glitch. Uh, We've got to pause withdrawals, but it's just a coincidence. Yeah. It's just a maintenance issue. Sure. Uh, okay. Well, all this stuff, more evidence for why we need Bitcoin. Uh, banks shouldn't punish crypto industry. Republican senators urge increasing regulatory crackdown on banks. Uh, serving crypto industry players may be punishing an entire industry. January 3rd, the three regulators, uh, that, of course, I believe would be the, uh, the these Republicans here. Or is it talking about the SEC and the... I think it's talking about the SEC, the OCC, and the CFTC. Uh, it says the three regulators warned they would take a careful and cautious approach to banks' interactions with crypto companies following a spate of collapses. Two days ago, Silvergate uh, collapsed. Uh, I think, man, I think all this stuff is great. I want to be honest with you. Thank you for the super chat. Like, I think it's great. I, I, I think we are clearing a lot of... We're opening a lot of eyes and we're clearing away a, a lot of issues with the toxic uh, weeds in crypto, the bad actors. And then also, hey, let's actually stop playing redirect and let's take a look at the biggest scam, which are the banks to begin with. Um, so there you go. The crypto purge. I don't think this is a crypto purge. I feel like we should go red today. We should. We should. Oh, I said toxic weed. Yeah, that's pretty funny, I guess. Um, let's see. We do have a uh, real quick before we bring uh, Kelly on. Uh, I would like to say uh, we are going to be um, uh, having. Well, I said I had Kelly on. I lost my train of thought. Want to do Market Watch real quick? Maybe it'll come back. Yeah, let me do Market Watch. All right. We've got 11,584 coins, market cap, probably about 9.2 trillion uh, on. Uh, or 920 billion, excuse me, on uh, coin market cap on Coin Gecko, it's 976 billion. We've got 24 hour volume, very high, 112 billion. Bitcoin dominance below 40% here. ETH dominance 17.7%. Uh, 17 Paraguays will launch an ETH transaction for you. Uh, Bitcoin coming at $20,190. Uh, Ethereum at 1427. Absolutely crushed over the last seven days. We are going to be making a move in our portfolio, which you can check out. Um, today at, I believe, at 3 o'clock. That's going to happen. Um, but we're, we got a lot of videos in the pipeline for you guys, including one where we are going to expose one of the biggest mysteries in crypto, short of Satoshi, short of, uh, you know, a couple other things that were really big. We think this one is going to be really big. We're going to be uh, basically... Giving you guys information that's true that nobody else has that everybody has been looking for. Um, and it might have to do with a certain meme coin. Uh, there's a lot of things that have now, uh, we were able to put a little nice bow on uh, and uh, have a lot of evidence. So excited about that. Uh, I've also got a video for you guys who have money on Celsius uh, on how hypothetically, if there was a retail clawback, what could a person legally do in order to protect their money from getting pulled back into a clawback. So we're going to be doing that video as well next week. Uh, a, a lot. Uh, I think we're doing an optimism video next week as well. So you guys be on the lookout. All right, let's go and bring Kelly on. All right, there he is. Green screen Kelly. Uh, Kelly, How are got, you doing? Yeah, we have about eight minutes. I just wanted to tell you that because we got a John Dean coming on at 1215. So I want to run through the show. I'm, I'm going to be super concise today. Uh, so let's just jump right on to it. Thank you for having me back on. Yeah, of course. Uh, you, you yesterday was my birthday. What's that? You, today? 
Yesterday. Yesterday. Yesterday was my birthday. So Happy today birthday. I'm uh, one day older and still just as immature. So, <laughs> yeah. And uh, guys, don't forget yeah. Kelly runs BitLabAcademy.com. So you guys make sure to go uh, sign up. It's our, uh, you know, we've got the new BitLab rolling out this month. Um, so super excited about that. Uh, we'll put it in the chat for you guys who want to sign up. All right. Let's hear what's happening on the markets. All right. Well, first things first, uh, did much change? I mean, looking at this chart from uh, uh, 888 Velvet, we can see that all we're really doing is retesting levels on a macro sort of scale. Now, if we look at this specifically on actually just looking at the price action on charts, I'm, without any patterns, just using moving averages here, I'm going to go ahead and uh, minimize this. Just using moving averages here, we have the 50 and the 200. Hmm. Once we lost this 50 simple moving average, We've tested perfectly on this 200 day moving average. Now, when we actually pull up uh, our chart formations and everything going on, of course, I'll zoom out on this a bit so you can understand what, what is actually going on. This is that de giant descending wedge that we've, uh, that we've been in and, and for quite some time. But coming down here on the daily, we could see we had this broadening wedge. And as soon as we lost this level, we came down and broke the actual level of previous resistance that we flipped to support but we we tested right below that right at the 200 day moving average and this box here is something that i've been drawing uh and sort of illustrating on the the bitlab morning daily stream that we have over there at the the uh, on YouTube, uh, bitlab youtube this region right now is perfectly in line not only with look at this the 200 day moving average this uh, previous price action resistance in this macro downtrend that we're now flipping to support double test here, which is necessary in this very uncertain market that we have. But this is also perfectly in line with this CME gap that we've been talking about that you've also been talking about a lot here on the show about this sort of magnetism mm -hmm. that's in this that's in the price action when we have this liquidity that has not been tapped in this area when we have this gap. And not only do we fill it, we, we, we went through it and have come right back into it. So we're having a lot of just wonderful confluence. Now, pulling up the BitLab trading stack, we can see also, this is on the daily time frame. We have had, we had the perfect call here with all these divergences, coupled basically all bearish divergence on RSI, stochastics, on balance volume, money flow index, uh, and the external, which is hidden volume, and a pivot high here. This is part of the BitLab market intelligence. And then as this is falling, if you're wondering, is this going to continue? Well, we can look here to the BitLab hidden volume and we can see this bearish divergence on volume. And the reason why this is important is when you want to essentially look at momentum in a move as having the fuel to continue or is there not fuel to continue the move at all? And when we're having price action trying this small attempt to the upside here and we get bearish volume divergence which we see here on the hidden volume this is saying there's not there's not enough fuel in the tanks to sustain even this weak movement so you you would have had an indication already from this move to the downside with this small relief uh this relief or consolidation attempt that the price action was likely to going to come lower and as we did that we came we have this you know basically broadening wedge we lost that support so where we're at right now if anybody thinks that the sky is falling oh my god the, it's going completely back into a bear market we need to realize we need to make sure that we have a plan of action that we go on at, at minimum the three-day chart if you don't want to do the weekly map out just a general sort of structure of key levels of previous price action lows and highs that we can see with all this volume and uh, you know with the vpvr here on the right like frankie candles uses this a lot we could see that essentially we fell through uh basically having this uh rejection at this 25 3 level this is the line in the sand that we need to overtake before we can even talk about continuing in a bull market where we're at right now very healthy if you ask me because there's so much uncertainty that's been uh, talked about in the market lately uh and at this level we're holding at this level that is a defined level and we're at the 200 day moving average and we're sitting here at the basically golden retrace uh from this move right here basically bouncing there's so much support that we found here and we have the blue wave here on the significant movement all these uh, uh on these indicators if you are interested you come over to bitlabacademy.com come over to indicators you can use bit 
squad 15 uh, in the cart for 15% off. It's where you can use all these to understand the momentum and the volume and the divergences. But essentially, I just want to give some hope. We are sitting on a confluent level of support across multiple different indicators, moving averages, and just momentum indications on the chart. Now, can this fall lower? Very well it could. There's a lot of macro uncertainty right now. It's still not going to be the end of the world. I think if we do fall from here, we're going to retest a, 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 basically a level uh, somewhere in the 18.8 uh, to 17.3, uh, which would be quite a fall. Um, but for me, I've had my my levels established to where I wanted a DCA. I've already started those DCAs uh, back here. Now that we're falling again, this is another opportunity to prepare for that bull run. So we are sitting on those levels of support. There is hope. Look at the charts. Come and tune into to this channel. You know, BitBoy, you do a great job of bringing on uh, so many great guests and providing the the community such a great service of, of keeping us in the know of bringing because I, I mean I know being in the studio with you guys we spend an hour going through a thousand stories trying to figure out what's the stuff that the people need to know and thank you for pulling that together and thank you for including me here that's all I got wee oui, wee oui. thank you Kelly appreciate it thanks for coming on and uh, uh, you guys well. check out the indicators uh, we have the link if you want bidlabacademy dot com slash indicators in the live stream. Uh, and yeah, I mean, we're always out here spitting out the stories. It doesn't slow, right, slow down around here, that's for sure. All right. Okay. All right. Moving and on. Just, no, I was just going to say real quick, since he was mentioning yeah. discounts, we, I know we mentioned Bitcoin 2023 conference coming up. Mm -hmm. I did confirm that that discount code BitBoy does work now. So if you guys want to oh. go over and check out that website, they got to fix later that day. Um, I think their prices go up tomorrow. I think it was 12 hours they till the prices go up. So if you guys want to go check it out, uh, once you're when you're checking out through the cart on the right hand side, there's a spot for discount code. You just put in Bitboy. It'll work. Yeah, you guys go to uh, bit uh, bitcoinmagazine.com and you can get to the uh, page where you buy your tickets. Uh, also, like a real um, alpha, uh, you know, OG trick here: buy your tickets to the Bitcoin conference the day they go on sale. Yeah. Uh, right now, the lowest price is $700. This is going to go much higher by the time the conference comes around. I think it's like three or $400 if you get it. Yeah, they're very know. reasonable. Like, we always they buy... they keep going up. Yeah, we always buy there. our tickets yeah. pretty much, the like you said, the day they go on sale, which is mm -hmm. right after the conference for, yep. for the following year. It's one of the best ones to hit if you're going to hit one conference. Yeah. And I saw somebody, uh, Dave Huber in here. Dave, I'm, I'm not going to call him low IQ. Uh, I can't tell if he's trying to make fun of us or he really is trying to figure out the situation on why, uh, you know, we're bullish right now uh, on the price of Bitcoin, um, even though the prices are down tremendously. Um, and he was talking about whether we're in a bull market or a bear market. He said, well, uh, technically we're in a crypto winter right now. Uh, you know, that's actually, uh, that's actually um, your opinion because if we bottomed, which I believe we have in November, then that means that we're no longer in a crypto winter anymore, technically. Technically, when you look at the daily, the weekly, or the monthly chart, it's very easy to look at that and separate everything into four-year cycles, bear market, bull market, bear market, bull market, bear market, bull market. The, the accumulation stage feels yeah. very long, and it is. Uh, it, you know, we've been in it for a while now. Uh, but that accumulation stage the price is slowly coming up from the bottom. So you can get massive gains. Like for instance, if you had went in at 15,000 and the price went up to 25,000, well, that's better return than you're gonna get on the stock market in several years probably, uh, depending on what you're, what you're you know, putting your money into. Um, but technically, it's a hard sell um, for bull or bear market right now. Yes, let's say over a two month period, you say this is a local little mini bear market. Okay, but if ultimately the price is bottomed on the large scale for how we usually talk about these Bitcoin cycles, technically you're gonna look back and this is gonna be seen as part of the bull market. The bear market's actually technically only like usually one year mm -hmm. from the top to the bottom. The way I like to say, it, people because people do really struggle with this concept. Like you're saying, technically mm -hmm. once after the bottom's in, you're going up from there, it is, technically bullish it just doesn't feel that way because most people bought near the all-time high and they're still way yeah. in the red uh, i call it like i like to say accumulation market which you said as well and people seem to wrap their heads around that much better where you get 
you know, one year accumulation, one year markup, you know, another year of markdown, which would be the true bear market, and mm -hmm. you get more time to accumulate again. And, you know, yeah. So, uh, right. Apparently, uh, Silicon Valley Bank has now um, shut down. No way. Yep. Silicon Valley Bank is shut down by regulators, FDIC, to protect insured deposits. Oh, interesting. Uh, this right here is, uh, I would say, proof of insolvency. Yeah. Right? Are, yeah. Are, are they stopping its trading or are they stopping its operations? Like, are they stopping? The bank the has been closed. The bank is closed. Mm -hmm. Wow. That's crazy. Very interesting. It, you know, this would be very fascinating to watch what this has. If we get multiple banks collapsing, what does that do for Bitcoin? Does it actually make Bitcoin go up? Because if the banks are failing, then that means Bitcoin is clearly showing itself to be a possible contender or, you know, to become the next financial system. I think it's a long ways away. Um, but banks failing is evidence of Bitcoin success, um, in my opinion. Uh, the bank people might make an argument there, but that's the way that I see it. So we could potentially see banks collapse and everybody's like, oh, it's going down. We're just going to go to 7K or 3K or 2K. And then we get that bounce. And actually, people are starting to see, I need to take my money out of banks and maybe put it into Bitcoin, yeah. put it into crypto. Uh, another, Why another you still can before, you know, the, the narrative, the regulators are going to not let people invest in crypto. Yeah. It's another win for self-custody, you know, uh, whether it's a bank, whether it's Celsius, whether it's FTX and exchange. Uh, when you have your money in crypto and you custody it yourself, uh, it's a much better feeling than having to trust somebody else. Yeah, absolutely. Um, okay, moving on. Buy signal Bitcoin investor sentiment falls to lowest level in two months. Um, not shocking. We're at the low point for the last two months in price. Uh, Treasury yields decline after February jobs report shows a slight gain in wages. This is a big narrative, big story today. Uh, you know, not as big as the bank story but they finally did put out the new um, jobs report. And what you see is that um, it, it was not growth over last, uh, you know, over last month, but still more jobs were added than they expected. Uh, investors focused on the smaller than expected wage gain in the report, which could cause the Federal Reserve to rethink an aggressive stance on rate hikes. Uh, data comes as investors consider the Fed's next interest rate policy. Um, let's see. Many are expecting them to announce a 50 point increase. We'll see. I don't, uh, I, I don't know if that's true. I don't know. Actually, I, somebody was just saying the odds have gone all the way back to 75% for 25 basis. Let's look that up. I love that. It's, it's changing by the minute because of all these issues with these banks. Because, guys, these yeah. Fed rate hikes are really hurting the banks long-term. Uh, you know, a lot of them were, were in long-term investments like it, that, aren't, that they ha are having to liquidate now for a loss in order to cover these withdrawals. 47%. 25. So it's um, about 50-50? Yeah, it's about 50-50 right now. So uh, I do think we will probably see this shift back. I, they've just already kind of like told you they're going to do 0.25, I feel like. Yeah. I think if they do a 0.5, it would be the following Fed meeting, which is not until, I think, June or May. I think there's three months without one. Can you look that up? Yeah. Yeah. All right. Um, let's see here. Where are we at? And I, I would like to say this. I hope you guys enjoyed my little video about Coin Bureau last night. <laughs> it wasn't really that crypto related. I mean, crypto YouTube it is. Uh, a lot of people, I feel like, missed the point of that video. Uh, really, I was kind of showing you how to reverse engineer stuff, which is kind of cool. But secondly, uh, we were just trying to show you guys that the Google trend numbers are completely wrong because if you didn't know, if you missed it, Coin Bureau means something very specific in French. I'm going to tell you what it is. You got to watch the video. And that skews search results. That doesn't help him. That doesn't help him get more subscribers because you, if someone's searching for, uh, you know, a certain item or a certain kind of real estate and a crypto YouTuber pops up, they're not going to be like, oh, I was looking for this, but let me go watch these crypto videos. Uh, that was not what I was saying at all. And I did not say that. And a lot of people, that's the message they walked away with, which was really silly. Uh, Coinbear actually came and uh, uh, commented on that video, but... I thought it was really super interesting. That's, you know, what we think is interesting as YouTubers uh, is generally not what the viewers find to be interesting sometimes. So, uh, so for March 21st, 22nd, and then there's one in May. So there is one, yeah. yeah, there is one in May. It's the beginning of May. So that's about six weeks. I guess they're about every six weeks is the way it works out. But there is a, that's why sometimes they're back-to-back -back months and then others they're not. 
Yeah. Yeah. Uh, thoughts on Ben Cowan and his video this morning? What do you say? I don't know. He's he's very doom and gloom. Uh, he's very doom and gloom right now. Um, so I would assume maybe that's what it was. Karma says Fed is fighting a losing battle against corporate greed. Um, I, I think the corporate greed is what kind of actually pushes the government in a lot of ways. Yeah, he gives a worst case scenario, so I'm yeah. sure it's not fun. Oh, that's what he did? I mean, that's what's in the title anyway. Yeah. U.S. Fed to create new crypto team amid concerns about unregulated stable coins. Um, the Fed is set to create a specialized team of experts to keep up with the developments in the crypto industry. You know, it'd be interesting if we got a bunch of experts from many different uh, sectors, commissions, committees, government offices, and together the people that were crypto experts in those uh, came together and did their own, like, I don't know, advisory council or something. Um, and that way, you actually have people in the government talking about crypto that know about crypto instead of uh, Elizabeth Warren. So, <laughs> okay. Uh, all right. New York authorities sue KuCoin over unregistered crypto sales today. Label ETH as security. Now, remember, the New York uh, District Attorney's Office uh, of the Southern District of New York, it has no bearing on uh, the outcome of whether something is or is not a security. Uh, the Fed, uh, or excuse me, um, the uh, the SEC is who determines if something is a security by a, a hearing like we're seeing with XRP. Um, and so this is similar in my opinion, I think, maybe someone can correct me on this, but this is similar to like a class action lawsuit almost. It's it's a civil, um, a civil matter. Uh, this is not a criminal matter, I do not believe. Let's see. Yeah, just accusing them of not registering a broker dealer license. Uh, so th this is more of the same FUD we see at the bottom where people are not feeling great about the, the price action. You get stuff piling on top and then everybody's like, oh, see, it's going to hell in a handbasket. I told you. A couple of weeks, we'll be moving back in the right direction and uh, we will be talking about the memes that came along with all the people who changed their sentiment from... <laughs> 30k to 2k overnight 30k so to 3K, crazy yeah. so crazy um okay justin sun set up 100 million dollar huobi liquidity fund uh now he bought huobi yeah he owns huobi he does own huobi he also withdrew 60 million of his own dollars on there partially causing the crash they were experiencing yesterday <laughs> justin sun is such an interesting one he is he really 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 somebody's is. like oh i hope he's i hope justin sun's doing okay because tron was crashing and huobi was crashing and i'm like Justin Sun gonna be fine. Don't worry about Justin Sun. He's covered. Oh man, Hi, Jason. Uh, according to Sun, Huobi token sudden collapse was caused by a few users. Yeah, him being one of them. It was like me and the two other guys who used the site. <laughs> um, let's see, triggering a cascade of forced liquidations. Last twenty four hours, Huobi's reserve dropped seventy two point four million. Okay, there we go. So yeah. U.S. trustee appeals New York judge's approval of Voyager deal with Binance U.S. They just won't let this go. Yeah, they're going to... So, apparently, they know they're going to lose. Like, this sale, it looks like it's going through. The judge has been pretty adamant about it. And now the DOJ, the Department of Justice, is saying, hey, you know what? Uh, they may have securities. Maybe it's criminal. Who knows? Like, okay, where's your list of securities? What? what list of recognized federal uh recognized on a federal level securities does binance us have on their site not a single one because gary Gensler never did his job so there we go uh the D the doj has filed an appeal um if u.s regulators successfully block this deal voyager can liquidate the initial bankruptcy was filed on july 5th um but from what i read was it this one here or a different article that talked about the judge. Yeah, there was a different one that I read that talked about the, uh, the judge that was basically saying that it's very, very, very low percentage chance that this appeal doesn't meet the same um, end as the last few challenges to this. Um, but they're, they're throwing every trick in the book at them. Uh, Binance market share hits new all-time high, even as BUSD plummets. <laughs> oh, man. The more they try to take out Binance, just the bigger stranglehold on the entire space they take. According to Crypto Conveyor's latest exchange review report, trading volumes uh, are 71% below their all-time highs. 
Um, Binance achieved an all-time market share in May of 2021. Um, that was when it was the all-time high um, of trading volume. Despite the increase, trading volumes continue to hover at historically low levels. Um, Top-tier exchanges now comprise 92.4% of the total spot uh, volume compared to 93% in January. So uh, it actually went down a little bit, which is interesting. Pretty, cl pretty close. Somebody but. in the chat was just saying nobody uses Binance. I don't understand how people come to that conclusion when you're looking at numbers like that. Nobody uses Binance? Everybody uses Binance. Oh, man. I tell you what. <laughs> Who are you following on Twitter that's telling you that? <laughs> Guys, I know some of y'all are new. And that's okay. We love the new people. That's why we're here. So I wrote Catch Up to Crypto for the new folks. If you've been in this space since 2017, you got no excuse when it comes to understanding Binance is the top dog in the space. You have no excuse. You've seen it. If you're new... You do have excuse. You can say, oh, yeah, I just guess nobody on Binance is actually trading. Guys, Binance is by far the most popular exchange in the world. They don't allow U.S. citizens any longer. Better way to say that, they now restrict and ban U.S. Uh, users on Binance.com. Binance.us is not nearly as significant of a player in the United States as Binance is on the world stage. So you may feel like people don't really talk about Binance U.S. that much. So it must mean people don't use Binance. Incorrect. Uh, and by the way, we've done a lot of research into the data on this channel, on the people that watch this channel. The number one chain that people use that watch this channel and are interested in is Binance Smart Chain, which is unbelievably interesting considering I don't ever talk about Binance Smart Chain. Um, so, or very rarely, we don't cover a lot of projects on it. Um, you know, maybe I might want to actually start doing that since we know that now. Um, but, uh, but yeah, so Binance is very high on the volume. Is there wash trading? Sure, wash trading everywhere. Uh, Nic Nicholas Hyder says, are clawbacks a concern with FTX uh, being in Bahamas? Uh, yeah, clawbacks should be a concern to everyone because it's not real clear how they're ruled upon uh, in relation to crypto. We only have one case um, right now uh, with the Celsius case where they even determined that you don't even use own your funds when you put it on there anymore. And that kind of gives them a reason to try to claw them back because they were their funds. They weren't your funds when you took them off, even though you're the one that put them on. So uh, Voyager liquidates 56 million in Ethereum, SHIB, and other ERC-20 tokens. Uh, CryptoPunk NFT bid funded with 527,000. Um, once worthless testnet Ether tokens. Um, let's see, they swapped it for... Um, Ether to buy the NFT, yada, yada, yada. Vitalik NFT collection takes top spot on OpenSea. Um, let's see. Was he actually involved in this or was it just someone using his name? Put out a press release and one week collector is mine, yada, yada, yada. People think that maybe he did potentially drop this with Gitcoin. I don't know. I guess we'll have to wait and find out more. I want to prove of that before I actually run with that story. Let's go talk about XRP. We're going to bring on John Deaton here uh, in about two minutes. Pro Ripple lawyer calls Ethereum holders to action in wake of this incident. Now, obviously, if you're in the XRP army, throw the X up, throw the X up in the chat. Um, and, you know, if you love John Deaton, make sure to smash that like button. Uh, one of my favorite people in crypto, no doubt about it. I like he's unbiased. He, he says... If they went after Ethereum before XRP, it would have been fighting for them the same way that he's fighting for XRP, and I love that. Uh, XRP holders, attorney, and founder of Crypto Law, John Deaton has issued a call to action um, for Ethereum holders in the wake of a recent lawsuit filed against KuCoin by uh, New York State. ETH is not a security. Had the SEC claimed ETH was a security, I would have acted just as I did over XRP. These regulators are out of control. I talked to John on the phone the other day, and man, we just share so many of the same concerns. It's unbelievably baffling to see the disconnect between what's really happening in the space and what the government thinks is happening in the space. I'm sure there are people that understand it quite well, but the majority, they're just at arm's length from it. So they can never really fully get, uh, you know, uh, in tune with the retail investors' uh, opinion on stuff and the actual narratives that matter in crypto. I'll go back up. What was the super chat before? Outcome of that uh, letter 
Yeah, we're not supposed to talk about it, Nicholas. Uh, we answered it, and I think that's it. So uh, we'll see. It wasn't, we were not the target, is what I'll tell you. We were not the target of that. Um, but I think it's, I think it's over. We'll see. Mm-hmm. Uh, agencies such as the CFTC have long regarded either as a commodity, yada, yada, yada. Um, lawyer predicts how the case will play out. Um, let's see. Attorney Scott Chamberlain has made his predictions. He says his first prediction was a summary judgment in favor of Ripple's Chris Larson and Brett Garlinghouse. So he believes the SEC does not have enough evidence to support its claim that two executives knowingly or recklessly sold an unregistered security. Uh, the outcome of the case is yet to be seen. Um, but Chamberlain's predictions will certainly add fuel to the ongoing debate. And we are going to be talking about maybe tonight I will cover that uh, XRP story with, I believe it's the IMF uh, is listed XR, uh, Ripple XRP ledger uh, officially as a potential for, uh, so was it for Swift to run on top of it? Can't, can't even remember it. Uh, hold one second. Let me pull this up very fast. Uh, let's see, where is this guy? Yeah, it's an IMF. So, uh, it was sent to me from King Solomon on Twitter, and somebody else said they found it first. Um, it's basically, okay, one second. Okay, you can pull it up now. It's this tweet right here. The International, or International Monetary Fund just released a document regarding a global settlement marketplace for tokenized assets with three potential options or platforms, DeFi, XLM, and XRP. So told you guys, XLM is probably going to do pretty well uh, being associated with a lot of these ISO coins. Um, even though it's not my favorite, we do have a position in it um, because of that reason alone. And let's see here. There's John. There he is. What is going hey, on? Hey, what's man? up? Are you getting ready to go do a UFC fight, John? Uh, no, but this is a gift. But... Uh kind of like it to be honest with you yeah but i'm in the fighting mood ben just like <laughs> you every day i tell you what john i'm i'm always in a fighting mood as uh as you know well let's i guess let's start with um uh just generally what's going on with the case right now in your opinion what what's the timeline you can generally see are we still looking at maybe about the summer being the most likely candidate uh to get some resolution no i actually think that um when she handed down the Daubert motions, you know, all those experts she was dealing with in the case, there were some people, Ben, that believed that both the Daubert motions on experts and the summary judgment would come down at the same time because she did that in the past. So I looked at when she's handled these expert motions and then the following summary judgment motion, and it's usually within a month. And so I think that we're looking at a a summary judgment ruling by Judge Torres uh, by the end of March, uh, certainly it's by the end of April. Okay, and so when we get that, uh, because, like, I'm not a lawyer, John. Now, I've talked to a lot of lawyers in my life. Uh, you're my favorite one. <laughs> but okay. uh, the the question is, when that summary judgment comes out, whether it's the, the 31st or, or the ruling on it, is that that's the end of this phase of the case, officially? Um, and that'll be whether th- they agree that it, the you know, token sale was a security or whatever the result may be. And then it goes to the second phase if it were not settled, uh, where they determine what to do with, uh, you know, if it were ruled a security, let's say the token sale, the second phase, kind of like with the library case, is determine what happens. So, like, is this the last thing we're waiting for? Or for us that are not legal experts, like, then is there stuff after that before we actually wrap up, you know, phase one of hopefully one, one total no, phase, it's hopefully. Great, it's a great question. Um unless the judge gives a definitive ruling in other words sec you win or ripple you win absent that there could be a jury trial so in other words the judge could say that she gives a partial summary judgment in favor of one party versus the other but says that before she can give a complete ruling there needs to be a jury trial because a jury determines certain facts in dispute And when you look at that Daubert motion that came down, you obviously have the SEC experts arguing with the Ripple experts, and there's certain things that the parties are not agreeing upon. Usually in securities cases, we get a decision from the judge, and there is no jury trial, and then it's just a matter of the remedies section and then an appeal. But there is a good chance, uh, I can't give you a percentage, but there is a decent chance 
that the judge says a jury must determine certain factual issues. For example, mm -hmm. the, F, the, the SEC had an expert, you know this, Ben, we, we're going to call him expert one. Yeah. Uh, that was the guy that they want to throw me off the case about. And he was going to testify as to what you or I or any other XRP purchaser were relying on in our head yeah. and why we bought XRP and how we had to only rely on Ripple, blah, blah, blah. Well, the judge struck him. Right? He never interviewed you. He never interviewed me or any other XRP holder. He just said, this is what um, I believe. Of course, the SEC gave his firm a $3 million contract to be an expert. So figure it out, right? Do yeah. the math. Oh, I, so I, the I, I forgot said, about that. That was, that was a hot story. Right. The judge basically said, you can't say that. You're not going to be able to say what the reasonable XRP purchaser believed or didn't believe. So that may put an issue in fact the judge you know and, and we submitted on behalf of xrp holders 3500 affidavits from across the world of xrp holders who said look i bought it because it was a top three crypto at the time i didn't never heard of ripple when i first bought it blah 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 or i bought it to use the ledger to access the decks you know these consumptive reasons to move money overseas etc so the, the judge could say whether or not XRP uh, had consumptive use or investment reasons, those are factual issues for a jury. So there is a chance that that happens. What I'm hoping for is that there is a conclusion from the judge that says, look, the token, it's software code, similar to what the judge did in the Telegram case, the token itself is not a security, it's just software code. Whether or not somebody sold it as a security, that can always happen with any asset, but that's done. And secondary market sales of this token are not securities. So even if Ripple violated the Securities Act in the early years by some early sales, that has nothing to do with the token mm -hmm. as it sits on exchanges. That's what really our heart is at and what we're hoping for. Yeah, and I think this is, this is the thing I learned when I went to Washington, D.C. I know I called you and we talked about it for a, a few minutes, uh, is that not one person that we spoke to in Washington, D.C., not one had even heard of the library case. And it's already, dis like, ultimately, it's not decided, decided, decided. First phase is um, the, the, what they're going to do, right, is still not determined 100%, but definitely the judge has already ruled LRC is not a security on the secondary market. And if you have a token that has any utility at all, like FTT had no utility. <laughs> like people can say that, okay. But if, if it has any utility, if it's used for anything uh, within the chain or or beyond, then the precedent now is it's not a security. And certainly XRP fits that uh, fits that billing. Yeah, I mean, the judge basically said he's going to make it clear that his order, even though he found against library and said that they sold library credits at specific times as an investment contract, that that doesn't mean that his order does not apply to secondary market sales. And what he did that your audience should know, and, and he gave this on the record, he said, for example, when the library sold LBC credits to Flipside Crypto, which was an investment club, he said that was an unregistered securities transaction because they put it in cold storage and they were waiting, it was early on. Then he said, however, my order won't doesn't apply if flip side crypto then sells it to someone else. Yeah. And that's really the whole focus. You know, it's just like I've been making people aware. If you go back to the Howie test bin uh, and someone bought an orange grove and that was a security. Well, if that guy dies and the heir says, Hey, I'm just going to sell this uh, land in Florida to, you know, ABC guy, yeah. that ABC guy doesn't know about how he doesn't know any of that, that subsequent second sale would never be considered a security. And this is common law in 80 years, there hasn't been a single case that has held that the underlying asset itself is a security in an investment contract scenario. And in 80 years, there hasn't been a single case where the second subsequent sale was also determined to be a security. Yet our regulators are pretending that it's the other way around. And so, you know, you're right. And you in D.C., what the scary thing that you and I talked about is how clueless mm -hmm. uh, our legislators are. 
you know, you you are in the crypto, I'm in the crypto, your audience is where, but these these people that are actually in charge of making the laws, they have no idea. And it is scary that you were talking to them and they were like, library, library who? Yeah. I, one by one, I was just like, maybe this one will know. I'm sure you are aware of the library token case, right? The what? Uh, yeah, right. just actually they gave a ruling in November. It was actually, I think, like right around the day FTX collapsed. They're like, no, never heard of it. They've all heard, every single one of them, though, had heard of the Ripple case. So, right. you know, you would, it stands to reason, in my opinion, that somehow the SEC is trying to suppress this message that this is actually maybe a death knell for their, uh, you know, attempt to regulate crypto, you know, by the cojones because they won a case. And even in the case they won, they still did not win jurisdiction over the, you know, current iteration of that project. So, um, and, I, and I'll say this, I, I think that when it comes to, are the legislators clueless? I think they under a lot of the legislators understand crypto and blockchain on a, on a simple level. So at a high level, but for the most part, from the ones I've spoken to, they almost all understand it a little bit, at least it's the disconnect between the narratives and the stories and the actual things that are important to the space, not just a press release that was put out on Forbes. So the staffer thinks that's what's important. Um, you know, getting, getting the retail investor and crypto Twitter kind of represented, I guess, um, you know, talking to the, the legislators about what's actually important. Uh, I think that can actually straighten a lot of this out. Um, so, you know, I, we're working on a document to, to give to, uh, uh, Congress, uh, to circulate around about what the library case was and its significance. Um, so, you know, definitely a shout to John, we're going to be working on that. But what I wanted to say is a question for you real quick. We talked about what we think is going to happen with the case, but what do we think is going to happen with Gary Gensler's attempt to control crypto through the SEC? Like, he just doesn't have a, a, a move. It, it doesn't seem like to me. What, what do you think he's doing here? Well, I think, I think he's losing uh, momentum and losing the audience. You know, if it wasn't for FTX um, blowing up, that sort of gave him some momentum you know, with the Elizabeth Warrens of the world to sort of continue his anti crush crypto campaign. But in the long game, he, he's going to lose. And that's what everybody needs to understand. And you've been talking to regulators. He's there are Democrats on the Hill that are starting to say, OK, this regulation by enforcement, this lack of clarity, you know, it isn't just come in and register. You know, when you have Jesse Powell's of, of Kraken saying, yeah, I wish I wish I could have just filled out that form on the internet and I would have been all set. You know, the message is getting there and I think he's losing. And I think what we really need and hopefully we get very soon is this decision from uh, the judge in the Ripple case, because I think that could be the fatal blow mm -hmm. for Gensler because if the judge sides as I hope, and I think in many ways she will, that for XRP and slaps down the SCC, it does two things it drops his momentum that all these things are securities because now we have a federal judge saying so, the otherwise and then two it doesn't just break his momentum but it emboldens the others ben i've talked to in the last two weeks i've talked to three projects that have received subpoenas from the sec uh that are in the stage of the sec talking about trying to do a settlement previous to suit and they're all like, I don't want to settle because they're not offering favorable enough terms. And I think it'll, a good verdict will embolden the industry, you know, to fight back, fight even harder because there's a rumor that there's two to 300 more potential enforcement actions out there. How many? I mean, think about that. That's just staggering. And, and think about this too, about momentum. Look at the recent cases. We've got the, the judge in the Ripple case says the SEC lawyers are not. They lack a faithful allegiance to the law and they're hypocrites. That's from a federal judge. Then you get the Voyager judge who just takes the SEC to task by basically mm -hmm. saying you want to you want to object to this finance deal because you think something might be something that you can't decide is something. I mean, he literally is going off on them. And then you've got the grayscale judges oh, yeah. in the hearing that just happened saying to them, basically, 
the same rationale you applied to the futures ETF equally applies to the uh, spot ETF. And basically what you just said, then you shouldn't have granted the futures ETF. And so they're, they're like saying the same types of things. And so until people like you are successful with the legislators, we've got to get these victories in court. And I think that's what's ultimately going to kill Gary Gensler because he doesn't have the law on his side. You know, Ben, he just literally said uh, in an interview that it's not good if a court strikes down anything from the SEC because that's not protecting investors. He literally said that if a judge says we're wrong. Yeah, well, I mean, that's. Yeah, he does. And he has been, apparently, uh, for some time, it seems. And I think that a lot of this stuff is going to come back on him. And I, I think the the tale of Gary Gensler, uh, by the time it is completely written, is going to be uh, a tale of a man pursuing power and then getting shut down at the peak of his career and then never returning back to, to relevance. That's what I see happening. Uh, he's just dug well, think, in too I deep on you, this. I think you and I are, are one of the only couple people out there that that predict that maybe he, he resigns by the end of this year. Yeah, yeah, absolutely. And, you know, uh, the, it's so funny, though, that you mentioned he got a lot of momentum coming off of the FTX debacle. Well, yeah, but he also met with the biggest fraud in the history of mankind and didn't know he was meeting with a fraud. So he's either corrupt <laughs> or incompetent. There's nothing in the middle. And how in the world he escaped that label and that narrative from that, it really is mind boggling. But of course, when you got the banking broad, Elizabeth Warren, sending him the questions before the hearings, you start right. to see the, the, the fix is in. Um, but it, I, it is, but I, I, I'll tell you, Ben, I think that if the, if the Financial Services Committee subpoenas and gets the, all the communications between SBF and, and X and, and, and Gensler and his office. I mean, I am convinced, I know you feel the same way that he, he's dirty. Gensler's mm -hmm. a dirty guy. He, he's, and I think the investigation will yield results. I, I'm very confident. I think the fix was in, I think yeah. that he was creating something with SB fraud and it was going to give uh, a regular to, uh, to SBF and uh, somehow there are going to be some concessions made to give him what he wants. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, oh, that was, against. yeah, that was, that was the plan. You know, he was going to try to finagle, uh, you know, overruling crypto or ruling over crypto. And then of course FTX happens and he gets a little momentum, but now he's kind of lost the momentum because of what, in my opinion, the library case, all he can do now is just go after uh, uh, these enforcement actions and try to get them to settle first. The SEC doesn't have the bandwidth to fight this main case at one time. Like, think about this. The library case, it took them two years with a very small market cap coin to be able to determine whether it was a security or not. And now you're talking about two, three, four hundred more. And we're talking about the hundred that are out there probably right now. How right. long would it take them to actually go through and get to a settlement or a result with all those trials? And that's what it would take to show the precedent that these are securities to keep going after them. This is what it reminds me of, John. It, it reminds me of, um, you know, a situation where, uh, you know, basically what someone does is they throw out a, a hook. Let me, let me, here's perfect. Boom Hauer from King of the Hill. You ever seen the show King of the Hill? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Boom Hauer's got, blah, 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 blah. can't even understand what he's saying. And, but he's always got a really hot girlfriend. And they're like, how do you get this, how do you get this hot girlfriend? Well, he shows Bobby what he does. He goes to the department store, Macy's probably, or J.C. Penney, and he just goes to every single woman that is there and says, hey, uh, I want to go on a date. He goes to several, several, several of these girls, and one of them finally says yes. And he says, see, Bobby, that's how you do it. He throws out these enforcement actions, as many as he can. Many of them are never going to get any kind of result, but there's some of them that will just try to get rid of it because maybe they do have wrongdoing in the background and just try to settle and get it done. And the SEC stacking up money, even though they're not able to actually go after these on the secondary market. And I've been told, and, and let me know if this is true or not, that the enforcement money that comes into the SEC, it can only be earmarked for the SEC. Like the rest of the government doesn't get access to that money, right? 
it can unless they somehow come up with some kind of like plan to reimburse victims or alleged victims. Yeah. But you're pretty much right. And the other thing I would add to you, Ben, is that I was speaking to a, a project that is in active litigation with the SEC right now. And so I know for a fact that some of the lower level trial attorneys, these are the people, you know, they're not the politicians like Gary Gensler or the director of enforcement. These are the the attorneys who are tasked with trying the cases in the federal courts. They're disgruntled, you know, so they don't necessarily agree with the agenda that's being set from the top. And a couple of these cases, two that I know of, the local attorneys are like, hey, you could see they don't want to fight. And so um, I think there's going to be, and we're seeing more attrition. That's what I'm getting at, is that I think that Gensler is losing the game. I think it's going to come from internally. He's pissing people, and eventually he's going to be gone. The, the one thing we can we can take grace in is that he will not be the chairman forever. Yeah. You know, you know, and the problem we have is we got to get be successful in your efforts and others with the legislators, because we can't have a system where you get one one chairman like Clayton and with with Hinman that says it's not a security, regardless of what you think about ETH gate, whatever that happened. Yep. And then three years later, you get a new chairman who says only Bitcoin is 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 a commodity and impl implicates. ETH. We can't have no. financial markets like that where no. it just keep flopping because. Who becomes chairman? Yeah, I mean, it, it, it is it just blows your mind, uh, you know, when you look at, you know, all the corruption and the fact that they talk out of both sides of their mouth. And I think you've got a lot of, you know, disconnect within that SEC office. You know, it reminds me of, uh, you know, uh, I was trying to cancel. I, I used to have all these DSL lines at my house uh, several years ago when I ran the ticket business. How I got into Bitcoin. I like 14 DSL lines in my one house because I had to have it for all this IP switching. It's a long story. but uh, you know, they came out to, to put it in and they're like, what in the world, you know, what are you doing here? All this stuff. I eventually had to close them down and they're not used to having shut down a house that has 14 DSL lines. And so, uh, I would talk to, I canceled the DSL lines like seven times on the phone with, I think it was AT&T. And so I would call and I'd be like, here's what the last person told me. There was never any communication at all between any of the reps that I ever talked to. I ended up actually having to close a bank account I had to get them to stop charging it because I could not get them to cancel it three to four times. They literally said, confirmed, cancel. Here's a number. And I'd call back in and they'd be like, we don't have record of that. It's because they get so big. There's no discussion, um, you know, but between the different offices. And I think the SEC is kind of segregated like that. You've got some people that are working on some things that are of one mindset. And then the rest of them hate Gary Gensler, you know? Um, and so there's not a lot of communication and cohesion in that team. And it leads to a lot of, uh, you know, frustrating head scratching on why in the world is 2023 now? It is, I'm in my second decade in crypto and we still don't have any crypto clarity or regulation. So, uh, you know, it's, it, it's sad, but we're going to get there. And uh, John, certainly I appreciate you uh, coming on the show today and explaining all this. You know, together, two of us, we're, we're quite the force in the XRP Army and uh, always glad to uh, represent uh, XRP. And actually, I think I'm going to go be speaking at that same conference you're speaking at uh, in Las Vegas in uh, nice. May, I think. Yeah, so I'll see you out there. Excited to do that if I don't see you uh, uh, at another conference before that. And uh, let everybody know where they can find you. Uh, crypto, uh, what, Johnny Deaton one um, is my Twitter handle. Um, and, uh, crypto law .us, you can uh, find me there as well. Yeah. And I just want to say to you personally, John, is that, uh, I would not fight you, but I think we would make really good tag team champions. Absolutely. Yeah. Absolutely. Right. Well, right, we're, gonna, we're, 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 we're going to win outside of the ring as well. Yeah. It's a, it's a little bushwhacker here. You know? <laughs> <laughs> All right, John, we'll talk to you later. Thank you, man. Thanks. Bye. Freaking love John. Yeah. I love John. He's so awesome. Uh, he, like there are so few people out there in crypto that are actually out doing things. We're one of them. John's one of them. Uh, you know, crypt, crypto window is out doing some things uh, very few are actually able to, or want to get into the fight, not just sit there and talk about it, which there's value to that education is value, but how in the world are we going to get this space where it needs to be without the leaders in the space 
making the moves to make sure that our values as crypto you know, investors and people that believe in blockchain, that they're not just scrapped away and this becomes the traditional financial system 2.0 that it was exactly built to fight. So, uh, you know, don't give up, guys. I think that when it comes to, uh, you know, the banks collapsing, it's interesting, we're gonna keep monitoring it. And uh, I got a, a video for you guys uh, coming out soon on who the founder of SHIB is. I know, I know who the founder is. So if you're the founder of SHIB, people are gonna know who you are next week. That's all I got. Be blessed. Good boy out.